you work hard on the content you create, so let's give your website visitors every opportunity to see it. In this video, you'll learn about eight ways to use dynamic lists on your website so you can show off your blog posts and online courses on your homepage, silo pages, thank you pages, in your sidebar, and more. Hi, I'm Christine with Thrive Themes. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, here is your friendly reminder to do so, and if you ring the bell, you'll be notified when we publish new videos. So one of the issues that seems to plague a lot of content creators is that once you publish a piece of content, your regular website visitors might see it when it first comes out, but after that, it just doesn't get a lot of attention. In addition, if you want to try to drive more traffic to certain posts, pages, or courses, to insert links and images by hand is pretty time consuming. So that is why we have four different types of dynamic lists available to you in Thrive Architect. We have the post list element, the course list element if you have Thrive Apprentice installed, the lesson list element also if you have Thrive Apprentice installed, and the products list element if you have WooCommerce installed. And what's really handy is that all of these elements are dynamic so you can customize them to suit what you want to display. To give you a better idea of what's possible with dynamic lists, let's do a quick overview of the different ways you can use them, and then we'll go over the post list and the course list with a little more detail. Now we're not going to do a full tutorial of how to use each dynamic list element as we already have those tutorials, which we will link below. All right, so I've got my home page here and for the first example, it's under our latest posts. So here we have one featured post, which is our most recently published blog post. Beneath that, we have three more recently published posts. And here I'm only displaying three posts, but you can display as many as you like. This entire section with these three posts plus our featured post was created using the post list element. Example number two, let's scroll down the page. And here you can see we are promoting some of our courses. This was created using the course list element. Number three, you can use dynamic lists on silo pages. So this is our silo page and it's specifically for the subject of affiliate marketing. Silo pages are a really great way to concentrate all of your most helpful or most relevant content surrounding a particular topic. That way anyone who's specifically looking to, in this case, become an affiliate marketer can come straight here and find all of your blog posts, all of your podcasts, and all of your courses just about affiliate marketing. So on this page, we're using the post list element, and here we're showing posts just about affiliate marketing only. In another instance of the post list element, we are showing case studies only. And then we have the course list element. Next, you can use dynamic lists on your use case pages. A use case page is a nice page to have on your website to demonstrate the variety of ways your product can be used. So here we have a product that we are selling and it's called Ultimate Affiliate. And we've got sections for two different use cases, online businesses and local businesses. And also at the bottom of the page, we have a section for case studies to show off the successes people have had with our product. Each of these sections was created using the post list element. Next, you can use the post list element at the bottom of your blog posts to display other relevant posts. And you can customize the element to show posts in the same category or with the same tags as the current post. That way you can control the relevancy of the post recommendations. Next, you can use the post list element in your sidebar to show recent posts. You can display posts according to category, and you can also show relevant posts. And the post list element does have different sidebar templates, which are all 100% customizable. Next, when someone signs up to get one of your lead magnets or to attend a webinar, on the thank you page, you can use the post list element to help get your new lead back to browsing your content. Again, you can specify that you only want to show relevant posts, by specifying a particular category, format, or author. Finally, if you offer online courses, you can use the course list element to create a My Courses page, and you can display only the courses that a student has access to. That way your student has a central place to go to access all of their courses. 
Having a page like this is super helpful if you offer lots of courses, because without it, your students are left having to use your main courses page, which displays all of your course offerings, and it might be difficult for them to find just the courses they're enrolled in. All right, so let's go over what you need to know to use the post list element and the course list element as shown in these examples. So I've got my home page here open in Thrive Architect, and I have a background section here for my latest posts. To add the post list element, let's go to the add element button and let's search for the post list element and I'll click and drag that into place. Next, we're prompted to choose a template. And what I'd like you to notice is the variety of templates we have available. Some are one column, some are two columns, some are narrow, which are great for use in a sidebar. And all of these are editable. So if you want a two column template to become three columns, you can absolutely do that. For now, I'll choose this template. Now the post list element has several options, which I will let you explore on your own. To select which posts are displayed, we'll need to go to the filter posts button. So we are going to do a custom query, and then you can select what content to display. So you can do posts, pages, Thrive Apprentice lessons, or Thrive Apprentice modules. For now, we're going to do posts. Now, as for which posts to show, the default is that all posts will be displayed and in descending order of the date that it was published. If you want to choose specific posts, you can add a rule, and then you can display posts based on the post category the format, such as an audio post or a video post. You can display posts by a specific author, or you can choose individual posts by title. Now let's say we only want to display posts that are in the affiliate marketing category. So let's choose categories, and then we'll click add to add our category, and I'll select affiliate marketing. Now, if you happen to have posts that you want to exclude from this category, you can do that as well. So let's go ahead and add a rule. And let's say I have some posts that belong to two categories, affiliate marketing and case studies, but I don't want my case studies to be displayed here. So let's go ahead and create a display rule based on categories and let's select the case study category. And then let's go ahead and select this and change that to exclude. All right, so that is how filtering works. And that is how we're able to put just affiliate marketing posts on the affiliate marketing silo page and show specific use cases on the use case page. So think about all the different ways you can apply this to your website. Okay, so let's continue on with the ordering options. You can order the results in a variety of ways. You can do date published, date modified, title, author, comments, or random. You can also sort by either ascending or descending. You can choose how many results to display, and you can specify which item number to start with. This is really useful if for some reason you need to skip the first result or the first several results. For example, this might be handy if you want to show maybe six results, then show a testimonial, then another six results. So you would need to use two instances of the post list element, and the second one would start at item number seven so that you don't show items one through six again. Now in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see that there's an option to exclude the current post from this list. This might be handy if you use the post list element in your sidebar to show recent posts. If your visitor is already reading a particular blog post, you may not want to recommend it to them again, so you can simply exclude it. All right, so that was the custom query option. Let's also quickly take a look at the related posts option. And this is what you'll select when you use the post list element at the bottom of a blog post or in a sidebar to recommend related posts and you can select your criteria. You can select either categories, tags, formats, or author. The ordering options are the same as before. And again, you have the option to exclude the current post. And I would definitely enable that setting because if you're placing this post list at the bottom of a blog post, you wouldn't want to accidentally recommend the post they just finished reading. All right, so let's go ahead. And for this particular instance, we're going to select custom query. I've got my filters set. I only want to display three items and I'll save and close. Now let's take a look at the example again. And you'll notice that there is a featured post above this section here. So to create that featured post, you can simply go to show featured content and let's enable that. And now you'll see that you have a featured content section. So let's go ahead and choose a template for our featured content. Again, you have several templates to choose from. 
I'll select this one. And now you'll see that the post that was in this position moved up to our featured content because that is our first result for the parameters we set. Now, if you would like to make any style changes to your featured content or to your post list, you can absolutely do that. Simply select the post list, then go to edit design. And now you could do things like change the borders and corners and change colors and fonts. But remember, these are dynamic lists. So the items that are displayed will change. When you publish a new blog post, the new one will be the featured post and this one will move to here and this one will move to here, etc. And one last thing about customizing post lists. Everything is grouped as you would expect. So let's say you want to round the corners of this content box. Simply select any one of these content boxes, then go to borders and corners, and you can go ahead and make your change. And as you can see, the change was applied to the other content boxes as well. So that makes it really easy to make customizations quickly. Next, let's quickly go over some highlights of the course list element. Let's go ahead and add the course list element to our page. And now let's choose a template. Now all of these templates are customizable, so if something isn't 100% what you're looking for, chances are pretty good that you'll be able to adjust this template to your needs. Let's go ahead and choose this one. Now let's go to the course list options. And just like the post list element, you can choose which courses to display in your course list. So let's go to filter courses. And then you can choose individual courses by name. You can select courses by a particular author. Now, when you create a course in Thrive Apprentice, you can choose a topic for your course. So here you can display all courses associated with a particular topic. In Thrive Apprentice, you can also assign restricted content levels and difficulty levels. So you can filter for those here and you can filter according to access and completion levels. So for your My Courses page, to display only the courses that a student is enrolled in, you can select Has Access, and also, if you like, you can select What Progress Level. For now, I'll select All Course Progress, whether or not they have access, and for the topics, I'll select Affiliate Marketing. And don't forget to save and close. Now on the left here, you have several course list options. For now, I will turn off display topic filter and I'll also turn off display course search. I'll let you explore the rest of the options on your own. If you would like to make style changes, you can do that by going to the edit design button. And just like the post list element, everything is grouped. So be sure to concentrate on style changes instead of content because content is taken care of by the filtering options we just looked at. You can change fonts, colors, spacing, borders and corners, backgrounds, and more. When you're finished making your customizations, you can click done to get out of the design mode for the course list element. Now, the last thing is you might have noticed that I have this empty space here, and that is because I have this set for four columns, but I only have three affiliate marketing courses. So I can easily fix that by changing this to a three column layout, and now it looks a lot better. All right, so that was how to use dynamic lists in Thrive Architect. Hopefully that inspired you to think about ways you can use the post list and the course list elements on your own website. You can get Thrive Architect and the rest of our tools when you purchase Thrive Suite. Click the link in the description to learn more. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.